Delta sleep inducing peptide, otherwise known as DSIP, has been shown to improve slow wave sleep in animals, and there's even some human data on it, and it's been around for a long time, so it has a good side effect profile. So I'm gonna share some data on it, mechanisms of action, and my own personal findings, as I've done quite a few cycles of DSIP. There was a double blind study with it back in 1981, and this is actually through IV, and it was shown to improve total sleep time by on average like a median of 59% and it had a quite a quick onset around two hours or just over and it improved um, sleep latency, the onset of sleep and um, less wake ups as well like the efficiency went up as well and the mechanisms appear to be modulatory rather than GABA agonist like sedation like you know you get drugs like Valium or Zoplicone and these these can leave you they have a lot of side effects and can leave you in a very uh, sluggish sedative uh, state the next day. Myself being someone that's used Zoplicone that sleeping drug quite a bit over the years and I'll come on to this with my own findings about getting off that drug. Some evidence suggests that it can dampen the HPA access so reducing uh, corticotropin and cortisol tone. So aligning with that kind of sleep buffering effect that people, some people report. And that can even affect modulation of luteinizing hormone and somatostatin. And if you don't know that second one, that affects your, the amount of um, growth hormone your body can actually secrete. And further to cement those findings with central autonomic modulation, in rodents, it's been shown to be anti-hypothermic, you know, helping with thermoregulation, overheating. In addition with rodents, studies suggest that it activates endogenous antioxidant pathways, as well as uh, stabilizing liposomal membranes. And this is why it's suggested it has uh, protective effects in these rodents. As back in 2003 with a cohort of female mice they were given lifelong DSIP but only intermittently for five days a month and cancer incidents that uh, that reduced by 2.6 fold and maximum lifespan that was increased by 24 percent. Obviously there needs to be a lot more studies on it but I think a lot of these effects are indirect you know from better sleep efficiency, less stage one, you know, and then obviously it's got cytoprotective effects, anti-mutagenics, i.e. cancer. Then of course, lower stress levels through HPA modulation. And then that gets me onto my own findings. When my sleep scores have been the worst, I see my telomeres, you know, the caps on the end of my chromosomes, they were the shortest they've ever been. They dropped substantially. And uh, also, my pace of aging went up in conjunction with that. And this test was done right at the end of March 2024. And then I did a cycle of DSIP in conjunction with Epitalon. And then I saw my sleep scores improve. And then they trailed off. And then three months later, I did it again. And then the sleep scores, they went up again. And this is exactly what I'm finding in the last few months as well. And of course, being less sleep deprived, my telomeres got significantly longer over time. My pace of aging score came down. And then just comparing it year to year, because I've been consistent with my Epitalon and DSIP, that my even uh, even on bad months, like my, the, the overall benefit is still everything is, is all higher compared to the previous year. And that's the main thing. You're not, I don't get too focused on day by day or month by month. It's just making sure over time that things are improving the, the overall average. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. And to circle back on that sleeping medication, Zoplicone, there's a lot of strong evidence that it can deplete the hippocampus region of the brain of brain derived neurotrophic factor. This is essential for neuroplasticity. And there's also evidence even in rodents with um, it affecting uh, oscillations of norepinephrine and then that can affect glymphatic clearance of the brain clearing of those toxins while you're asleep and looking at my brain age as of february 2025 it got older i believe down to homocysteine going up so i've been fixing that through uh, you know trying to reduce the amount of um, sulfur supplements i have but also i'm now increasing my b12 and folate as i found out they were a little bit on the low side for someone with double MTHFR gene, so a poor methylator. But then on back on that topic of BDNF, that I think is another factor. I do lots of fasted exercise, which is good for BDNF, 
But then, uh, yeah, I think also using zoplicones quite a bit, I think that has depleted it. And over this cycle of DSIP and epitalon, I'm noticing that I'm needing that zoplicone quite a bit less. So very exciting to see, and I'm currently awaiting uh, new results with uh, obviously my brain age, but also telomere length and uh, you know my pace of aging, all everything. And just to touch on that other peptide, epitalon, that can help with pineal gland modulation. And then it therefore help with melatonin production. Everyone calls it you know, your sleep hormone, but that can even help as well with thermoregulation. So these things can be really helpful in the summer when your body's running a little bit hotter, you know, obviously the weather outside. And then obviously the days are, they're shorter too. And that's a pattern I've seen in my data is when the days are the longest, the heat is the highest, that my uh, uh, sleep scores can go down because you know, you've got the light coming through. Even with myself, I do wear eye covers, but that doesn't stop the noise from, you know, you can hear birds and things like that in the morning, which that can activate, uh, you can get a cortisol dump. And then that once you've got that, then it's very, very hard to get back to sleep. Diving to dosing with DSIP, the typical ranges is from around 100 micrograms up to 300 micrograms. And a lot of people, they fall in that kind of somewhere in that range, typically around 200 micrograms. That's people I deal with. Myself, I'm, I'm on the higher side of that 250 micrograms. I mean, it's a pretty cheap peptide. So, and not everyone does respond to it because you've got to remember with peptides, some people naturally produce more of that specific peptide than others. So there is a bit of an individual response. But on top of that, obviously sleep hygiene habits, caffeine cutoff, and that obviously that depends down to genetics because some people like myself, I'm a slow metabolizer of caffeine. So I tend to stop it a bit earlier than other people in the daytime. And thankfully the data with wearables is getting pretty accurate now, whether you've got a whoop, Aura Ring, Apple Watch. So it doesn't take you long to figure out if something is beneficial or not. You might be, some people respond really well to things that improve GABAergic tone, toning down the sympathetic nervous system. It might be magnesium glycinate, taurine, glycine, these kind of things. And also with dosing frequency of DSIP, a lot of people respond to doing it every other day. Well, that has a very short half-life. It does have a lasting effect. So just doing it, you know, three and a half days a week, every other day. And then at the dose I'm doing it, that would give me, that would last me 50 days because I get 25 shots out of one vial. And on that topic of vial size, a lot of the peptides I've been getting this year have been from Peptides of London. So they provide a five milligram one. And their, their peptides seem to be very high end. They've even been used in a groundbreaking study with that peptide I mentioned earlier, Epitalon with uh, the top university, Brunel, and that'll be coming out the results very, very soon. Uh, but another company I use is uh, Swiss Chems, although they're, they're a bit cheaper, that's a smaller vial at two milligrams, not five, but I've used their DCEP plenty of times as well. And again, I've, I've done my own testing on their Epitalon and that was legit. With DSIP being a popular peptide, unfortunately, peptides of London are sold out. So I'm hoping that they will restock soon. So if you've got any feedback with using DSIP, then feel free to comment down below. I'm always interested to hear people's response to it or maybe you've stacked it with Epitalon. So if you like that video, then check out this one on that peptide Epitalon. And it's not just, uh, it doesn't just help with melatonin production, but activates telomerase, which can help lengthen your telomeres. And this is seen in my own personal data. Thanks for watching. See you next time.